Hey, do you like the orange curtain? Um, trying to record a quick video and I've got a little corner to record it in because the labs are very popular with students because we're running an exam on Monday. That might not make me very popular. Um, and we're going to talk about the ligaments of the vertebral column. Got a couple of different models, some homemade ones, to get across the idea. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what I tell students when they ask me about the ligaments of the vertebral column. They're actually quite sensible and we can also talk about spinal stability, all right? Now you should know about the parts of the vertebrae already, because I'm not going to do them again here. And once you know the parts of the vertebrae, the names of those things, the intervertebral discs, uh, then you realise that the names of the ligaments are actually really sensible. Sensible names are good because we can remember them, right? First of all, here's the column of vertebrae then, right? And we can see this bit of tape here running anterior to the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs. And it's a very long ligament. So this gets called the anterior longitudinal ligament. Good start, right? Um, I mean, it's quite a thin bit of tape here in us. It's actually quite a bit wider and will really cover the vertebral bodies. Um, and it's, it's kind of, it's, a, it's the tough ligament, right? It's a good, tough, thick band of connective tissue. Um, and what that's gonna do is, this is the only ligament that resists that movement, right? It resists extension of the back. All of the other ligaments I'm going to talk about are posterior to this one, and they're going to resist like hyperflexion, overflexion of the vertebral column. But that's the anterior longitudinal ligament there. All right. If there is an anterior longitudinal ligament, by the way, it runs from the sacrum up to the skull, then there must be a posterior longitudinal ligament and we can just about see it if we look in here. So the posterior longitudinal ligament is going to run on the other side of the vertebral body. So like this one, it's also going to run the length of the vertebral column and it's going to cover the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs, but on the posterior aspect. So it's, it's actually inside the vertebral canal, it's inside here. Right. This isn't quite as tough as the anterior longitudinal ligament. But what it does do is, um, because it covers the posterior intervertebral disc, it means that if the intervertebral disc tries to prolapse posteriorly, which it tends to try to do in the lumbar region, you know, if, if, you, if you pop a disc, the nucleus pulposus tries to pop out from the fibrous annulus ring, and instead of popping out posteriorly into the spinal cord, the posterior longitudinal ligament means that it's going to hold, it's going to reinforce that part of the intervertebral disc, and it's more likely to herniate out posterolaterally, right, so posteriorly but laterally, which of course is where we find the spinal nerves. So that's why a herniated disc tends to start to squash the spinal nerves and give all those sorts of symptoms rather than go straight back into the spinal cord. There's the vertebral canal, so the posterior longitudinal ligament would be running like this, all right? Anterior longitudinal ligament, posterior longitudinal ligament, we're doing well. Apparently the posterior longitudinal ligament has also got a lot of pain fibres in there. It's good at nociception, but I don't know much about that. All right, my next favourite ligament is uh, ligamentum flavum, plural ligamenta flavor. Now these run between the laminae of adjacent vertebrae. Uh, ligamentum flavor flavum means yellow, so it's a yellow ligament, yellow. Um, so this would run here between the laminae, but imagine it kind of more on the internal surface, I think, but I can't get to the internal surface. And the two ligamentum flavor on either side of the same vertebrae will meet in the middle. So ligamentum flavum, um, the other interesting thing about the ligamentum flavum is that if you're sticking a needle through the layers of muscle of the back, the ligamentum flavor is the last layer 
you go through before that needle goes into the epidural space or the extradural space, right? And then if you go through that extradural space, you'll go through the dural mate, dura mater, and then the arachnoid mater, the pia mater, and then bam, you into the spinal cord, depending upon which level you're at. So, I mean, I don't do this. I don't stick needles in people's backs because I'm a doctor, but I got a PhD. I, I study anatomy and teach anatomy. Um, the actual doctors who stick needles in people tell me that when you do this, the ligamentum flavor can be quite thick in people as you're pushing the needle through, that it, it's the last bit of resistance. You kind of get a you kind of get, feel a pop. You feel the resistance drop off as the needle goes through the ligamentum flavor, ligamentum flavor and into the extra dural space. But I don't know, I've never done it. Don't plan to either. So the ligamentum flavor run between the laminae of adjacent vertebrae, um, kind of covering over this, this hole at the back here. Um, and these are the spinous processes, and there are ligaments running between adjacent spinous processes. Really wish I'd tested this tape before I'd used it, but it's a nice color. Um, the ligaments running between the spinous processes are called the interspinous ligaments, nicer. There are also ligaments running between the transverse processes called the intertransverse ligaments, but they're pretty pathetic and we don't really talk about them much. Whereas the interspinous ligaments are, you know, they're significant. Interspinous ligaments, now we have another layer over the tops, so over the tips of the spinous processes, we have the supraspinous ligament, supra. So super, like a pond, right? And the supraspinous ligament runs kind of like this, right? Something like that. The supraspinous ligament runs from the sacrum up to C7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, C7. The C7 vertebra is the one that you can palpate here. And at this point, um, the nuchal ligament takes over. So there's actually like a big, a much bigger, thicker, tougher ligament running from C7 up to the occiput up here. And the, the nuchal ligament, you can feel it actually, right? So you can feel, if you put, you, if you move your head this way, you can palpate the spinous processes of your cervical vertebrae. And then as you flex, you can then feel a band of connective tissue sticking out. That's the nuchal ligament. And the nuchal ligament is kind of, you know, it's more of a thicker wedge of, of tissue here, much stronger, uh, probably helps hold the head up, but it's also a big attachment site for all the muscles of the neck that help hold, hold the neck up in us, in us bipedal humans, all right? That's it. There are a few other bits and bobs. There are ligaments that also attach the vertebrae to the ribs and there are ligaments covering over the various joint capsules between the vertebrae and that sort of thing. But the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments, the ligamentum flavum, the interspinous and supraspinous ligaments are the ones you need to know about. Ticked. So next idea then is spinal stability. Well, as this model shows, so Dave Woolard, uh, one of the physiotherapists I work with and the technicians built this. So we've got the blocks of wood obviously don't compress, so they're like the vertebral bodies and the, the bits of foam in here do compress, they're a bit like the intervertebral discs. So here we've got the vertebral bodies and the intervertebral discs and the anterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior longitudinal ligament. And look, when this is intact, it, it's very, very stable, right? Doesn't really want to twist very far, doesn't want to flex or extend very far, but just enough so that you can, you can move. So this is a, a stable spine. Um, whereas, if you don't have any of these, well, if you've played Jenga, you know what this is like, but this is even less stable. If I let go of it, it's just gonna fall over. But even if I take away one of these ligaments, so now I've only got what is essentially one column, right? Because I've taken off the other ligament. This is now very unstable. It just, it'll twist as far as it likes it. Bend. This is an unstable spinal column. So when we're considering whether a spinal column is stable or not, we're considering uh, three columns. The anterior column is made up of the anterior longitudinal ligament plus 
the anterior two-thirds of the vertebral bodies and the anterior two-thirds of the intervertebral discs. So that's one column. The middle column then is made up of the posterior longitudinal ligament and the posterior third of the vertebral bodies and the posterior third of the intervertebral disc. So that's two columns. And then the third column is the what's left of the vertebrae, all of these bony bits back here, and all of these ligaments back here. So that makes up the three columns, anterior, middle, and posterior columns. This idea says then if, if, if two of the columns next to each other are broken, severed, damaged, weakened, stretched, whatever, two of the columns next to each other, then the spinal column is no longer stable, right? Um, or even worse, if, if three of them are damaged. Because um, if you've only got one column left, um, or, yeah, if you've only got one column left, then the vertebrae can rotate, can hyperextend, can, can flex, they can move in unnatural ways, which could stretch the spinal cord, compress the spinal cord, sever the spinal cord, injure the spinal cord, because the vertebrae are supposed to be protecting the spinal cord. But as soon as they break away from the, these three columns and they're free to move, you're at high risk of spinal cord injury. So that's why we care about this, this idea of columns and that's why we care about the ligaments uh, of the vertebral column. All right? That's it. See you next week.